Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. Well, I'm going to finish and go into the weekend with uh, one more kind of a, a recap of early Joshua. So the stories in Joshua, if you read the narratives, are laden, filled with stories of deception and trickery, sneaky stories. I mean, the, the book starts out with the story of Rahab hiding the Israelite spies up on a roof underneath the uh, drying flax and, and tricking the king's men into thinking that the spies had already gone off into the hills. So uh, it starts with the king and his people being tricked and uh, Israel winning the battle. Then you have this battle at Ai where um, uh, the, the battle unfolds the second try. The battle unfolds with Israel sending most of their forces into hiding behind the city while the, the smaller contingent attacks the city from the front and pretends to be losing. And so the, the Israelites soldiers start running from the, the battle scene and sure enough, the, the soldiers in AI throw open the city gates and they go pell-mell after the fleeing Israelites. And at that point, uh, Joshua's off to the side. He's watching all this. He raises his javelin, which is the signal for the, the Israelite army in bulk that's hiding behind the city to come out from hiding, enter into the city and take the city. Uh, the soldiers from Ai who fled the city and left the gates open a little late for them, uh, they realize as the city's burning, uh, that they not only have lost the city, but that they're now caught between uh, two factions of Israel's army and, and they lose as well. They were tricked, they were deceived, and they lost. Then you, you roll in, and the next story is a story about these people who are Gibeonites. And, and uh, Gibeon was a place uh, that was in the, the promised land that Israel was to conquer. And Israel wasn't supposed to do treaties with uh, any of those people they were supposed to win. And the Gibeonites realize what's going on and that God's behind Israel. So they dress up in old clothes with old sandals. They take stale, crusty, uh, old bread and provisions and, and old wine sacks. And they journey to the encampment of Israel and and said, hey, we've heard that God's with you and we want to do a treaty with you. We won't bother you. You, you won't uh, bother us. Uh, and, and Israel says, well, how do we know you're not one of these conquering tribes, the people that we're supposed to conquer? And the answer is, well, look, we're worn out. Our, these clothes we're wearing, these were new when we left. Uh, you know, this bread was fresh. Uh, and we, 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 Look at our provisions. You can tell we've traveled far. So Israel cuts a deal now only to find out that they're a neighboring city and uh, Israel lives with the consequences of the deal. It was smart for the Gibeonites. Israel was deceived. Um, now nestled into all of this though is the story of Achan. Now Achan, uh, when Jericho was taken, the, the metal booty was supposed to go to God and his temple and his purposes. Uh, not temple, but his his uh, treasury. And instead, Achan steals some from God and hides it in his tent. It's the only time deception doesn't work in early Joshua because God is not deceived. God is not mocked. See, you and I, we're easily subject to deception. And this whole world paints non-truth around us, parading it as truth, whether it's uh, morality that's being painted as truth when it's not, or whether it's uh, uh, priorities or whatever it may be. We are easily fooled, but God is not. And it's a moral lesson from this early part of Joshua that we need to pay attention to God, the one who won't be tricked, the one who is authentic, and the one who will lead us in truth. Something to chew on as we pull into the weekend. And that's why I've made it your video thought for today.